No matter what you call it, feces, dung, crap, fecal matter, or my personal favorite, dookie, if you flush it in Columbus or 24 other central Ohio suburbs, it will likely go here. The enormous Southerly Wastewater Treatment Plant on South High Street, just south of El Dorado, Scioto Downs. Construction started here in 1967 and really hasn't stopped since. It was built when Columbus's population was about a half million people. Now the metro area has almost two million residents. It is here in this normal-looking, atriumed building that your waste arrives at the Southerly. Even though it houses a nasty job, plant managers wanted a pretty building since it is visible to thousands of motorists on nearby Route 23. Because the sewage pipes all use gravity to run downhill, your poop and pee arrive deep underground. It actually comes in about 45 feet below where we're standing right now. Sewage may leave your home in a 5-inch drain, but by the time it gets here, it comes through three pipes as big as 14 feet in diameter. As the raw sewage is lifted, it is screened for debris. Since our sewers are so large, um, we get logs, car trunks, um, bowling pins. We've had bowling pins come up here, sheeting out of a shower. So a lot of big stuff gets in here that can harm the plant later on. They come up against the bar racks. These grates bring them all the way up to the surface, scrape them off onto a belt. And it's basically this, this is protection for the plant and for the equipment that follows. Assistant plant manager Darren Wise explains the strangest thing they've ever lifted out of the pipes. Well, there was a boa constrictor that came in here a few years ago. And it came in here, it was still alive, it was unharmed. It got raked up by the, the bar racks here, by the rakes, and um, got put on the conveyor belt. And the operator noticed it, was able to capture it. It was cold. Uh, they ran warm water on it and soaked it up with soap and cleaned it up and called the Columbus Zoo and it's at the zoo still to this day as far as I know. We checked to make sure that wasn't an urban legend and this really did happen, although the Columbus Zoo passed the snake on to an animal rescue group. If this plant processes 110 million gallons of waste a day, you might wonder how bad it smells. The answer is honestly not too bad. Here's why. Because we have a lot of odor control around this facility, for example, the bio towers you see here on the left, we have 10 bio towers that scrub all the foul air coming in off of the sewers and also the different processes here at the head of the plant. This is where some of our phallus odors are generated and we scrub those odors biologically through these bio towers and it does a very good job of reducing the odors at this facility. For as much technology and structure you see walking around, it's interesting to note that the plant has tunnels that run through the 225-acre complex. In fact, Rick notes that the tunnels comprise the largest room in all of Franklin County. There's one loop you can make through the tunnel that's actually over a mile. You can walk a mile diameter and never touch the same space twice. So we have a lot of equipment in the basement. We have all our infrastructure in the basement. It's considered a room because we have very few doors that actually divide this up into separate spaces. By building code, it's actually considered a room. Back above ground, the sewage gets filtered again, and again, they discover more surprises. We're in the screen and grit building. Um, we have fine screens in this. We also do grit removal. This is a part of the plant that gets us in the most trouble when we take kids through the plant because they'll swear up and down that one of these toys belong to them. But we get cell phones, um, we have had billfolds which we have turned into the police, we get glasses, you know, even a set of choppers there in the window, so a lot of stuff. Outside, at the enormous rectangular tanks, Wise gets down to the science of how the plant uses bacteria to eliminate waste. This is where the lion's share of our treatment process occurs. These are our aeration basins. and In our aeration basins, we have aerobic bacteria that break down the waste. We give them air and food. The food is the, the, the wastewater coming in. These bacteria are the same bacteria that thrive in ponds and streams and nature. We just have them concentrated here to, to perform the job that we want them to perform. As long as we keep feeding them wastewater and giving them air, they stay happy and thrive here for us. It's just concentrated nature is all this really is. Okay, these are our final clarifiers. Uh, each one of them holds 4.4 million gallons and we have 12 of them here at Southerly. These are some of the largest final clarifiers in the world and we have people coming from all over to see them. It has time to get quiescent and settle and the bacteria settles to the bottom it has a scraper mechanism that goes around and scrapes it off the bottom to the center 
and then it's pumped off the bottom center back to the head of this process where it continues to mix with raw wastewater coming in. So it's a continuous process of returning the bacteria to the head of the aeration basins and raw sewage coming in and meeting up with it. So we keep everything flowing in a continuous pattern. Okay, we're getting near the end of the process. This is our disinfection tank and our post aeration tank. Two things we do here is we, since we discharge to the river and we're such a large volume, we have to maintain a certain level of oxygen when we go into the stream so we don't harm the stream. Um, in this process, we disinfect, we kill the pathogenic bacteria before we go into the stream. A couple hundred years ago, people typically lived in single family homes. Um, they had a dug outhouse. So what they discharged found its way into the stream, but the stream pretty much purified that small stream of water. Now as we become, we live in larger and larger communities, for instance, Columbus, 1.2 million people. Um, this is a large concentrated stream that's going into the river. It totally overwhelms the river. The river's not able to purify this on its own. So we have to build these large community wastewater treatment systems to actually treat that water and return it um, for reuse. Basically the same water that exists today has existed since the beginning of time. Uh, my great grandfather may have drank some of this water. Someday my grandkids will drink this same water. So it's really neat to be in a field like this. We provide probably the ultimate reuse of any industry that exists. Um, this is all the same water and always will be the same water. It's been around since the beginning of time.